This week's episode is in partnership with Intact Insurance, here for you and for everything you care about. Hi, let me just read you a couple of headlines that are just happening. Uh, analysis, Trump's desperate attempt to save his imploding presidency. Trump says he will not be going to Biden's inauguration. He's, uh, that's, he's, he's not going. Oh, what else is there? Trump publicly acknowledges he won't serve a second term day after inciting a mob. No, he didn't. Dana Bush fact checks lie in Trump's new video. The U.S. Capitol Police Chief to resign after Wednesday's riots. Capitol riots raise urgent concerns about Congress's information security. Okay, well, this is just, uh, well, they're giving Biden the vaccine. Um, I think I think he's already had it. <laughs> that's one good thing that's going on is that they're giving the incoming president the vaccine to keep him from that. Anyway, what a Schitt's Creek show that was. What a mess. Like, honestly, we're, we're inserting some brevity because like, yeah. what a week, but honestly, like it did feel at times like we were watching the darkest black mirror esque version of America's funny Home videos on Monday, because you had people who were wearing like game of Thrones cosplay as they stormed into the Capitol. And you know, that guy with the stupid Viking hat. What about the other guy sitting with the police shield on the bench? What? with yeah. the glasses on, looking yeah. unhinged completely, staring totally. off into space. The guy sitting in, I don't know if it was Pelosi's office or whose office it was, it was her feet, office, yeah. feet on desk, cell phone in hand. Yep. Um, and I've heard so many women respond in such a, um, a visceral way to, this is the white guy the typical white guy that harassed me in high school. This is the typical white guy at the bar that pushed me up against the bathroom door. This is the typical white guy that bullied me in the grocery store. Like they really attach so much of their trauma to looking at this man's face, the age, the build, the hat, the, 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 uh, the body language. So many women on social media have really reacted um, in, in a, in a truly terrified way to what that guy represented and that he was sitting at the woman at, at, at Pelosi's desk with his feet up. Well, the thing is like, okay, so, I mean, we're all laughing at the Viking hat because who the heck wouldn't. And also the guy who's sitting there wearing his, like the bare skin rug that he probably stole from his parents' cabin. But it, it when that you, was, uh, well, it's ridiculous. But, but then you go, okay. So like joking aside, what I don't think you realize is also the footage of the guys who were there in full, like they had, it looked like they had explosive vests. They definitely had bulletproof vests. They had handguns that were concealed partially. Mm -hmm. They had zip ties, which indicates that they were going in there prepared to take hostages. You have no shortage of people who said that they were going in there specifically looking for Nancy Pelosi. He was in her office. He is now doing press interviews, like round them up, arrest them because no shortage of crimes were broken. And that's what everyone's saying. If you don't, if, if arrests aren't made, if facial recognition isn't used to track these people down. And then of course, like that guy who's proud of what he's done. So he's going on the rounds, doing interviews on, you know, Fox news and stuff, and he's putting his name out there. So I don't know why they're not presently behind bars. Like it's, it is insane. And why do they have access? What you, one of the headlines you just read, Jan was, um, you know, concern for security for Congress members, mm-hmm. secu- personal security and information because all these people had access to their computers potentially they stole mail from their offices like what like th- it's just I it's think baffling. I think right now there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of moving mm-hmm. parts there are more CCTV cameras in the capital than probably anywhere else on the planet they've got a lot on their hands right now they're they're trying to navigate the inauguration how they're going to pull that off what they're going to do it may not even be out in public I don't know if it might just be behind closed doors with the man putting his hand on a Bible and carrying on from there. I think they're assessing so much stuff, Caitlin, that Mm -hmm. um, I know that they're going to make arrests. I just, I feel that without any doubt, like you mentioned, there is a murder investigation that is going forward with uh, one of the uh, security guard police. I'm not sure what his actual official role was, but you know, they're feeling like this was murder and that he was killed intentionally. And so they've got, you know, God knows how many hours of this camera footage to go through 
to unravel things. And I think they will make arrests. I think right now there's so much shock um, and they're just unraveling. They are making identifications. I've seen on social media, a lot of people outing people that they knew and circling them, posting the picture and say, hey, all you metal heads out there who, who love metal, this guy, you might want to get him off your playlist. He's part of, I'm not going to say a, a fake name of a band in case I'm naming an actual <laughs> band, but it's some weird name of a, a metal band and a well-known guy that's, you know, quite up there in the metal world. So, you know, I think even the acquaintances of these people are literally writing in going, I know who that guy is. Most of the people that we've seen in the iconic photographs posed, you know, next to the cosplay guys have all been fo fo um, identified. They all have like names attached to them now. Yeah, so a lot of them I, I think I just... think they will be arrested. I, I do. I think there's going to be arrests being made. It's just, a, it's baffling to me that, you know, you, you think of the number of people who were arrested. There was a, um, a protest that happened in 2017, and it was a group of disabled people who were having their rights taken away. Well, not their rights, sorry, a portion of their health care was being taken away, um, was being repealed. And so 180 disabled people were arrested protesting in 2017. You look at the number of sexual assault victims who went to the Capitol and were arrested when they were protesting um, the uh, Brett Kavanaugh nomination. So you can successfully oh, arrest. It's like, it's yeah. like you can successfully arrest people in the U S under many, many less dangerous circumstances. And in this one, it was like, gates are open. We're taking selfies. And so and, and let's wanna... face the elephant in the room, Caitlin. If yeah. this group of people were African-American people, people of color, marginalized people, uh, they would have been shot. Absolutely. They, they would have been, been shot. shot. They would have been killed. They would have been beaten within an inch yeah. of their lives. Yeah. Uh, they would have used massive force. They would have used yeah. water guns. They would have used tear. You would have seen tear gas everywhere through the building. As a result of not taking that action, though, you do have a Capitol Police officer who was bludgeoned to death with a fire extinguisher. That's what happened. That's the homicide that they're investigating. And so there is consequences to your law enforcement officials when you don't plan accordingly and you don't treat these people like the threats that they are. People at the U.S. Capitol riot are being identified and are losing their jobs in droves. Mm -hmm. New headline just popped up. Yeah. So like I said, the repercussions are going to be very far reaching. These are very early days. I mean, it's Friday, you know, we're going into the weekend here. And uh, so just within the last few days, all of this has happened. Um, can mm. anyone speak to either you or Adam? Um, I don't know how much humor there is to this, but one of the gentlemen, I, I'm, I'm saying this with compassion in my heart for every human being, no matter who you are, uh, apparently tasered himself in the genitals. Uh, he he went in with that. a taser gun. And, well, he, he died of a heart attack. He's one, oh he's one, of, the, he's one of the fatalities. Oh. And I've heard just varying things about this guy who was a, a Trump supporter that went in with his taser and while he was climbing up something, he tasered himself in the genitals. Uh, yeah. It sent him into cardiac arrest and he did pass away in the, but I just thought what kind of weird, there's no end to the ways that we can exit this world. But I think for, for most Americans, this is a horrible day for all of them. And we have to keep in mind that these were a few thousand people. There are 330 million people in the United States, um, 75 million of which voted for Trump. And mm -hmm. um, we didn't see those kinds of numbers. And I think the silence is deafening there right now. Uh, there's a photograph of one lone Trump supporter Thursday morning that was standing outside a gate in front of a whole bunch of armed guards, armed police force that was standing mm -hmm. there with his flag. One guy yeah. who felt that he could still go and, and do it. And there's still Republicans that are trying to deny that the election was won in a fair and just way, that the all the votes were counted. But uh, what do you guys think of Trump backpedaling here the last few days making that statement, you guys will be prosecuted. Uh, I think he's trying to avoid being impeached myself. Yeah, I think probably. I mean, he's only got two weeks really left in his term anyways. So, uh, but he still could be impeached, which would be the right thing to do on the government's part the, for the, the officials who have the power to do that. Um, but I don't know that they will. I, I mean, I don't know that they'll- it's, that too, it's too late in the game. I, I just feel like, you know, 
Los Angeles County, COVID-19, um, these are the, the, the these deaths um, equal the homicides in the city in a year. So yeah. the, there's 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 a lot of problems in the states other than you'd think that would be the biggest problem. But the COVID-19 numbers uh, in the states are beyond. They really don't even know how they can curtail them at this point. Um, there's a lot of people throwing their hands in the air going, we, we don't know what's going to happen. But here we go. The, the train has left the station. So yeah, it is sad a- to see. I mean, I have a lot of dear friends in the States. We've talked about this before. I love going down there. There's beautiful people and beautiful places. And for me, I'm not going to let this represent the entire country. And I would caution other people to not do that same thing. Um, in Canada, we have the same problem. I don't know if you guys had any of this in Ontario, but in Red Deer and in Calgary here, we had Trump supporters in car rallies that were going down main streets, pulling uh, rebel flags, you know, and we we're just like, what? They yeah. did make arrests in Red Deer because um, they had more than 50 people gathered in a public place. So in Canada, we have these people that are, I guess, like-minded that are, are hanging on to this comet tale of Trumpisms and, and, and doing rallies in our, own, in our country. I just don't get it. Yeah, and it doesn't make sense here because he's not he's not a leader that anyone here could vote for. So it's not as if you're exercising some sort of, you know, a personal, <laughs> personal political view that has an impact on Canada. Um, I guess it's I guess it's more of like a, a theme that they're subscribing to more than anything. But uh, yeah, we did have some of that. I think it started at Bayview, if I'm not mistaken, Adam, and then kind of worked its way downtown through the city. But I mean, I think in uh, up next, one thing we can definitely dig into a little bit is a trend that I think we're going to see more and more of, which we've already started to see with Donald Trump now, is deplatforming, for sure. Well, we are going to be right back. You're listening to the Jan Arden Podcast. We will try and bring some levity to this program at some point. We will definitely be talking about Caitlin's <laughs> ongoing pregnancy. And uh, maybe things that I ate in the last week. We'll be right back. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Welcome back to the Jan Arden Podcast. I'm here with Caitlin Green, who is pregnant. And Adam Kosh, who's in his basement. But it's Uh finished and it's carpeted. I just... You know, I'm working on new songs as we move forward. That's a good jingle. I know a lot of people are feeling really, really fatigued, pushed to the limits of their mental wellness. And I, I just want to be the torchbearer of positivity here. In light of everything that we're seeing, my, my dear darling mother circles around my heart every single day. She's been gone up two years now. And I always hear her words and they are the best is yet to come. And these things don't last. And it's just the world being the world. And um, whenever, you know, even when I was growing up and the world seemed like it was just in flames and and we, we have, we've had seen the Vietnam Nam war and um, just lots of things happen over the years. The, the uh, all the fighting in Belfast and, and the stuff going on in the middle East. And I mean, the world is always in some kind of chaos. There's, I think I read something the other day that there's 17 different wars going on on the planet right now. These oh small gosh. little wars that are going on um, that we don't hear about because these big headlines steal all that. But all I know is that people are resilient. They're built for change. I think that what happened in the Capitol on Wednesday, it's pretty impressive to see a group of people that were wandering through you know in in, behind locked doors with gas masks on waiting to see if they were going to die that were back behind their desks eight hours later swearing in the 46th president of the united states so democracy did not come to a halt um they cleared the place out those the the protesters when push came to shove i think they realized listen we could all really be killed here this is, you know, they cleared out, but they were back swearing in the new president and they were carrying on. And there's been a real lesson in this democracy will not be taken down by a bunch of cosplay guys that I don't even know if they're well, they're just, they, none of them look mentally well. 
None yeah. of them look mentally well to me. If that is the cross section, where were the people in suits? Was there anybody there in, in a, in a decent suit um, speaking articulately, like actually making an articulate valid point about the election and the results and what nobody, it's all just, um, and, and it is, it's domestic terrorism. And I think it needs to be called for what it is. It's, it's white supremacy. It's racism. I didn't see a lot of African, black African American people running through that crowd. I, I really, it looked like a KKK rally. I think one of the things you're going to notice now that happens as a result of this, that's already happened because we're kind of waiting to see if, you know, does the 25th amendment get invoked? Is he going to be impeached? What's going to happen? That's all up to the the powers that be in the U S but um, you are seeing uh, a deplatforming happen for Donald Trump right away. And that's something to keep. So explain that a little bit on. more to explain that a little bit more to listeners, Caitlin, about deplatforming and, yeah, so, and, and what, what, what that actually means. Yeah, so deplatforming is when um, usually, most commonly refers to social media organizations who basically block someone's account, they ban them from using their service, and it's because they believe that they've broken their rules of, uh, of communication on their site, the rules they have in place for, for personal safety, and and usually just for, you know, kind of common sense. Like, it kind of started with Alex Jones. I don't know if you guys remember that name. He was the guy who was behind InfoWars. And yes, uh, I think what he, yes, yes. he finally sort of like ultimately crossed <clears throat> that line because he had been targeting Sandy Hook family members, uh, fa- families who lost children in the Sandy Hook mass shooting. And he had been mm. calling it uh, a, like a fraud that it never happened, and was, which is a total lie. And as a result, the parents of these, you know, the parents who've already lost their children were being constantly harassed. So he was deplatformed, took him off Twitter, took him off all these different social media sites. And then this week after Donald Trump called for his supporters to um, go and uh, disrupt the certification of Joe Biden, Capitol Hill, um, you, you, you're seeing the same thing. So like Twitter gave him a lockdown for 12 hours and Facebook and Instagram, because they're the same company. And that hurts decided- him where it counts, doesn't it? Like. Yeah, that's and that's and, that's Trump's Achilles heel is any social platforms. Yeah. And Facebook and Instagram have decided to ban him for two weeks, at least leading up to um, the inauguration of Biden, because they just didn't want this happening again. And Twitch, which I don't know if people are familiar with this. It's a streaming um, service. It's used actually by a lot of DJs and video gamers, um, but it was being used to stream his rally. So Twitch has banned him permanently. And even good old Canadian Shopify, the e-commerce site, they decided that they were going to part ways with his uh, e-commerce sites like the Trump Organization website and one of his campaign sites. So you'll see that start happening more and more this year because I think social media has a huge role to play in spreading this sort of and weaponizing this sort of misinformation. And they have to do something about it. Well, how is it that the man stood, you know, in front of those thousands of his supporters, Trump, and incited that kind of action? Like, I guess in my mind, I kept waiting for the National Guard to have their black gloved leather hands underneath each of Trump's armpits, <laughs> carting him into a paddy wagon and taking him to the Pentagon or getting him like just saying, you, you are under arrest. You have just no. told thousands of people to wreak mayhem. And this backpedaling is, oh my gosh, it, it just once again, he, he believes his own stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this is this is who he is at his core. There's no shifting it now, right? Um, we're in the final days, so it's not going to change now, I don't think. So, yeah, everyone just has to kind of wait it out. It, it is funny. I saw no shortage of people pointing out on <laughs> on social media. They said, "Well, so he's too dangerous to post on Instagram and on." But he's got Facebook. the nuclear codes. The, yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, I don't blame people for saying it doesn't make them feel very good to think about that. But I, 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 I tweeted, "Hey, anybody else getting messages from Trump on LinkedIn?" <laughs> I yeah. saw that. That was very. Hey, funny. hey, is he's Trump is back on MySpace? Um, <laughs> but it it really has been uh, a comedy of errors. For sure, but I am. Um, yeah, I I'm just, looking forward to. I'm looking forward to hopefully never hearing about it again as of uh, as of end of January. <laughs> well, yeah, and and let's hope that the 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 people in power make it impossible for Donald Trump to ever run for public office again. Um, I feel like he's such a danger because he talks about creating this news channel. Mm-hmm. As he goes forward and being a real agitator, like, like I said, I hate to repeat this, but 75 million people. So pretty much half of the voters, I think Biden won by 8 million in the popular vote. And of course won the electoral vote, but um, 
that's a lot, a heck of a lot of people that he can agitate on a constant basis. And how can you have Biden, Kamala Harris and Biden trying to run a country with him undermining things all the time? So I think Twitter, Facebook, all those people are, are going to have to look at his behavior going forward. If, if anyone thinks he's going to go gently into this good night, they're very wrong. You're listening to the Jan Arden podcast. We'll be right back. Driving during our Canadian winters means being ready for anything, and that requires planning ahead. In my case, once I've secured my most precious cargo, aka my dog, and an ample selection of beverages and snacks, I make sure I've tucked away stuff like flashlights, warm blankets, and a first aid kit. You know who also likes to be prepared? The good people over at Intact Insurance. Their blog, which you can check out at intact.ca slash advice is filled with tons of useful tips and information and articles to help you and your car get ready for cold weather. Care Bears Countdown, four, three, two, one. Who's that coming from somewhere up in the sky? Welcome back to the Jan Arden podcast and show. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is a podcast and a show. You're getting two things in one. I'm here with Caitlin and Adam. Caitlin, Let's fill everybody in on what week you're on in your pregnancy. And uh, I'm guessing you have six weeks to go before the child comes out of your body, ripping, crawling, screaming, tearing out of your torso. Well, hopefully not that. But okay. I, <laughs> but I, I am 32 weeks. And uh, he is reportedly, according to my app that measures mm-hmm. this size, the size of a Care Bear. How big is a Care Bear? That sounds really big. Is that like Build-A-Bear? My gosh. How are you going to do that? So I'm honestly going to the app right now. And I think that what they were measuring it, like it's supposed to be the size of a toy, like a toy Care Bear. So 16.7 inches as of this week. About That's how long he is? Apparently, yeah. He's more than a foot long. Yeah, I guess he's more than a sub. He's longer (laughs) than a sub. I've Googled, and according to Wikipedia, a Care Bear is 13 inches. Okay. So I think, right. I think you'll be okay. Yeah. Well, Caitlin, you're going to be great. I mean, you are in the prime of your life. You're a youngster. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm very excited about you having this person. I'm not excited about you, you know, leaving the podcast for a little while. Although you're going to come and say hi to us when you can. Like, when you only when you're when you're pumping milk into those magic pumper things, the breast mm-hmm. pumps, you're you're gonna be able to. We'll we'll be doing the the podcast with you, and it'll be going. Yeah, you'll hear it in the background. They're like, yeah. Rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> well, I rrr, think rrr. yeah, it should be because of how we do the show now. It's so much easier to be able to like check in from home. So hopefully, after a few weeks of uh, of recovery and getting my feet under me, I'll be able to check in and and let you guys know that I'm alive and um, that my brain hopefully is fully functioning. <laughs> um it's it's a cool experience like I mean you think about it it's like I've never experienced anything like it in my life and everyone everyone who I know who has kids even though they're not shy to tell you obviously about the ups and the downs they all highly recommend joining the club so I do have to believe people genuinely enjoy it Adam you know all about this you've already got two kids you did it twice so nice you did it. I don't have any kids that I know of but I did wake up with some discomfort in the in the uh, Northwest Territories in the late 80s, early 90s. Could have been okay. anything. Um, well, I'm excited for you. I, I can't imagine, I just can't imagine going through what you've been going through. Like every woman just seems to take it in such stride. But I'm trying to imagine something moving around in my body and sleeping at night and, and, and feeling a, a living thing. Not a thing, like a, a, a beautiful little human kind of punting around in there. It's got to be bizarre. It is so weird. And when they get to be big, it, you really, really notice all their movements. And so yes. um, he, this, this unit in here gets hiccups a lot. And when he gets hiccups now, he's so big that you feel like you have hiccups. You get like phantom hiccups. And my doctor said that it's a good sign for lung development. So I was like, okay, well, it seems to be all clear, but he's definitely active. And you're right. It is bizarre. And for the first few weeks, I felt like it was more of like an alien movie than anything else. And then you settle into it being normal and then you like kind of like it and get used to it. So yeah, you just adjust, you adjust better than you think you will, or I've adjusted better than I thought I would. I really didn't know if I was going to like this at all. And uh, it's been pretty okay. I I think you've done so well. You've been very practical about it. You're, you're quite economical and you're very, 
a straightforward person. I don't find you overly sentimental or overthinking things. You feel, I feel like you're really organized. Do you still feel organized through this? As organized as you can be in the middle of a pandemic. So like some things that I wanted to do where I thought were like part of the quote unquote process, they, they don't happen. Like you don't go to prenatal like fitness classes. You don't go to in-person like <laughs> birthing classes. Like, you don't do any of those things. Not to say that I was necessarily looking forward to, you know, doing downward dog when I was pregnant, but it's just stuff that you hear about that all of a sudden you can't do. So yeah, that's one thing. Plus getting furniture delivered. My gosh, it has been really, really difficult because delivery times are delayed for everything. So we're trying to set up a nursery. I'm trying to like navigate how you apply for like EI. Like, and also for me, I love, I love obviously being on this podcast and I love the the morning show I work on here in Toronto on Chum. So it's hard to imagine leaving work for me for even one month, let alone, you know, uh, up to a year. Um, so that's crazy. That that's hard to imagine. I know that Adam and I will be checking in with you throughout because we're going, I'm going to live vicariously through you and Adam (laughs) can revisit when his girls were small, probably seems like a million years ago. Hey, Adam, it does. And it also feels like just yesterday that both of them were born. So it's wild. Um, I have those conversations a lot. I know we're kind of straying away from the uh, the capital stuff, but I, I think we've spoken to that as much as we can. And you guys can turn your news channels back on and get all the updates. <laughs> um, but I I have a lot of girlfriends that are my age. I'm in my I'm I'm in my late fifties. I'm fifty eight, uh, and I have a lot of girlfriends that didn't have kids. Yeah. Um, you know, I have a handful, way more than you would have seen twenty years ago. I don't ever think I remember one of my mother's friends ever being childless. I just don't have any recollection of meeting any of my mom's friends that, that mom would say, well, they never had kids. I, I don't remember that. But yeah. with me in this generation, you know, I'm going to say a good half of the people that I know, and they're all married, they're all partnered mm-hmm. off, but mm-hmm. half of them don't have kids and they chose that. Yeah. Um, it's it's, a, it's more, way more common now for sure. But I, I do, and I get asked about it a lot. I get asked about it in interviews, you know, why I didn't have kids and was it anything to do with your job? And, and it's, a, it's a bunch of things. In my 20s, I thought I was pregnant every month. I went through that. I was, a, a, I was foolish and I was, very, I was just out there being stupid. And so I went through that whole phase. And then I did get busy with work in my 30s. And then in my 40s, my very early forties, I got pinched, you know, in my brain and in my heart about, Oh, I'm running out of time to have kids. So as a woman, I was fighting this biology. That's part of what makes me a human being is my body kept prompting me. You better have a baby. You better. And I even had discussions with a very dear friend of mine in the UK. We got, we got drinking one night. I don't, but this is one of the reasons I don't drink anymore, but it was one of those conversations in earnest where like, should we do this? And, um, so when I, I don't know, I just, it's delightful for me to see you going through this. Mm. I'm not going to say that I have regrets about it, but I can't say that I don't have pangs, um, of loss. Like, do you feel like you, like you wonder, like, you're like, Oh, I wonder what that, like, you know what I mean? Like you wonder what it might've been like. Very much so. Very yeah. much so. I, I wonder. And I, and I lament sort of what I've done. I mean, both my brothers have children. So the family name, the lineage marches forward. Um, <laughs> my, my older brother is a granddad and he's got two sons that, you know, so it, it marches on. So I'm happy for my mom and dad that way. But for me, this is the end of thousands of years of women on, on my side for mom. Mm-hmm. And I do, I do lament that. I, I think about it. I know I'm just being silly, but um, I wonder what, I wonder what it would have been like. Yeah. I wasn't a mom. I, I really wasn't actually. And I definitely at points in, in life as, and even when I was married, I fully thought I wouldn't have children. I thought I'm, you know, love my job so much. I love my life. I, everything that I have going on is what I want. And I want to be able to travel more and live uh, freely and all that stuff. And so, but I also knew that I wasn't locked into it. Like if I knew that I I could change my mind, I felt like I could change my mind if I wanted to, but we did wait. Like my husband and I, we've been married for six years, but we've been together for 11. And so 
we definitely enjoyed our time. Just I love that us. traveling. Yeah. I know you've traveled a lot and seen yeah. a lot of things and, and had time to get to know each other and be, mm -hmm. I feel like your kids got a real chance of growing up with actual adults. There's a lot of kids having kids, right? I couldn't, we, we laugh, like, honestly, I couldn't have done this even two years ago. I mean, I know I could have, but like 35 is, is, is an age that seems, I guess it's like compared to a lot of my other friends, it was a little older. And certainly now that I'm 37, I'm definitely on the older end of the spectrum within, you know, even my generation for having a first child. And uh, I'm couldn't be more thrilled with it. If it works for you, I can't recommend it enough. If you're at all like minded towards me, um, I recommend it highly because it meant that we enjoyed everything. I don't feel like I'm missing out and I am ready to take a break and like do something a little different. So it'll be it'll be an exciting uh, challenge. I'm sure well, I'm, I'll be very. I'm cranky. just I'm just heading out to be artificially inseminated, and we'll be right back. Oh, we're going to take a short <laughs> break. This is the Jan Arden podcast and show. Hello, my name is Jan Arden. Uh, you're listening to the, sh the podcast and show. I'm here with Caitlin and Adam. This is, uh, if you're listening on terrestrial radio in your car driving right now, this is segment four. So we've only got 10 more minutes to go. So why don't you just stay sitting in your car? You can, we're going to, this is our, what, what section would this be now? Our entertainment set? Is this to like redeem ourselves from the heavy nature of the show? Childbirth, <laughs> the, the rushing of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C.? Um, talking about me lamenting my lack of children. And now let's talk about who could possibly be the new James Bond. Let me tell you who the new hottest stars are. And we talked about this last mm -hmm. week in the show. We talked about a, an intimacy coach. Yes. And so everyone that has sort of jumped on the Bridgerton show on Netflix, it's, it's one of their big hot shows right now. There is a gentleman on there that is so handsome Caitlin, I'm going to let you pick this up because I don't know if it's because of the success of Bridgerton or that there's a lot of eyes on this man, but he is now shortlisted for the new James Bond fellow. Yeah, we've been, everyone's been debating about who the next James Bond is going to be once Daniel Craig retires from the role, which is coming up. And so this guy, he plays the Duke of Hastings, I believe, on Bridgerton. Yes, of course. And, of course it is. Yes, of it's course. Duke of Hastings. And, he, his, uh, the actor's name is, I believe, I was mispronouncing it on the morning show this week, but I think it's um, Reggae Jean. Oh man, I'm going to butcher this. What is it again? No, just, it's, just it's, try it. Reggae Jean. Yeah, it's Reggae Jean Page. Reggae Jean and Page. I think Reggae Jean Page. And he is a, a combo. He's, he's part Zimbabwean. He's part UK. And um, he's very, very handsome. And I haven't seen Bridgerton yet. I've been told by everyone who listens to watch the show because they love it. Uh, but he apparently plays this Duke who is like very, very good looking and also has a bit of a dark side to him. And so people think that that means he could he could kind of work the role of James Bond. Plus, he's only 31 years old. So if they did end up having a successful run with him, he could certainly last for a few films. Yeah. And yeah, he's he's been shortlisted because of the success of this show. And he's he's easy on the eyes. So I'll, I, I agree with I, that. And I thought one of the other fellows uh, was in, was it I Robot or Robot? Uh, that that oh. lovely fellow. Um, I'm probably not even. Don't don't even listen to me right now, you guys. Just just shut the show off and get out of your car because I obviously <laughs> I don't even have a name or the show that he's on. But I can picture his face. He played um um uh, in Bohemian Rhapsody. He played he played. Uh, Freddie Mercury. God, did oh, that take me a long okay. time to get out of my my menopausal head? Remy he Malik. Remy Malik. Yes, Re he yeah. is also rumored to be shortlisted for Bond, and I think that's an interesting choice because we're seeing well, these really diverse faces and these diverse um, backgrounds. Remy what, Malik is a, is the new Bond villain. Oh, he's the Bond villain. Yes, he's the new Bond villain. Well, uh, he would have been an excellent Bond as well. I yeah. Think. yeah, so he's he's getting stuck in the uh, the villainous role, which I think he'll do really, really well. And I remember one of my favorite actors, Javier Bardem, was a fantastic Bond villain when he like took he out, was. I don't know if you guys remember this, when he, he like took out half of his face because it had been disintegrated when he took cyanide pill or something. Anyways, he was fantastic. And he has, you're right, him and both Javier Bardem and Remy <laughs> Malek have that. Today. I know this show today is just like, 
what is our theme? We don't have one. Hey. <laughs> the theme is um, that there is no theme. <laughs> we, uh, we are, what's so hilarious is the memes that are happening about 2021. Because everyone was just like, 2020, screw you. We're going to kick you in the balls. Get out of here. Like, the worst is over. And within the first, like, eight, nine days of 2021, we are seeing such bizarre stuff going on. I, I just, it's going to be, a, what an interesting time to be alive. I have to tell you, I'm a, I'm not a fan of like all the negative stuff, but I am a fan of how human beings are being pushed to the brink of what they think they can handle and that we're being forced to change. We're being forced to consider, to look at things, to look at how we do things, how we're eating, how we're, how we're living, how we're treating the planet. Like, COVID, the, the, the U.S. stuff, the, everything going on in the world is making us look at ourselves. And I love that aspect of what's going on because there's some real changes happening in the world. There are people waking up. So I think, you know, I, I, I always say it, good things are coming out of bad things. Anyway, yeah, and I also uh, think we're living through history. I keep telling, I mean, you might not want to, you might not have chosen or volunteered to live through history, but nonetheless, we are in fact living through history. So it's a really cool moment in the sense that you'll never forget it. If I have to try to find my own like silver lining, you're not going to forget this. You'll be telling your grandkids all about this stuff. If you're going to have grandkids or you'll be telling your friends, grandkids about it because it's kind of, it's crazy. And we still have such hopeful news on the vaccine front. Like, thank you, science, for that piece of thank information. Thank you, science. Oh, I, I am pe- pe- science enough. A lot of people have asked me if I would, am I, oh, are you getting the vaccine? I'm like, mm. yes, I'm getting the vaccine. <laughs> uh, but I have a new little thing. I have something to share with you guys, and I'm not Ooh, kidding okay. about it. I'm leaving my Christmas trees up until I get vaccinated. Good. I saw you tweet about this. What? I'm not this kidding. Decision? I don't know. I like getting up to them in the morning. I mean, I'm, I'm lazy. I don't want to <laughs> take them down. Um, I have, obviously I live alone, but I can have one friend over here to help me. One of my trees is like 12 feet high and the other one's seven feet high and they're nothing fancy. So don't be thinking, oh, yeah, she's got two trees. I'm telling you, they look like Charlie Brown trees, but because <laughs> I had extra time this year, I'm like, why not have two crappy trees? So anyway, I'm going to leave them up until I get vaccinated. So I'm thinking at my age, my job, my place in society, I'm really not helpful to anybody in any capacity. (laughs) I'm not a frontline worker. There's nothing I can do to save the world. Um, I'm probably looking at, you think October, November, maybe this year, or do you think it'll even be this year? It could. Oh, I think it'll be this year. And I think that it could be in the summer. I know they're hoping okay. to have eight. They're hoping to have 8 million Canadians vaccinated by July, which would well, be Well, I don't great. even think I'm in that wave. I don't, I don't think no. I'm in that wave. You don't think maybe we can like make a case for podcast hosts to be considered essential. No, my <laughs> gosh. Imagine. For sure. I, um, I, I know really there, to... there's nothing essential about me at all. And I, and I totally understand that I'm definitely going to be <laughs> diligent and keep my mask on and keep social distancing. And, and actually I find myself getting more afraid as time goes on. I feel like I was much more cavalier in the beginning. And now I'm like, God, Jan, you've gone nine and a half months without getting it. Keep going forward. And now like I ran into London drugs yesterday and I had to get, um, just a few things like I needed toothpaste and London drugs only lets a certain amount of people in. I've never been crowded in there or anything. I'm usually in the aisle by myself, but I was scared and my heart was pounding when I came out of there. I had my mask. I had glasses on. I had my ball cap on. Um, I put uh, sanitizer when I went in and when I came out of the store, they have a big pump there and I'm, I'm kind of, surprised at myself that I'm getting a little more frightened yeah don't you I mean, think it comes in, I feel like it comes in waves though because there are points at which I, I feel more relaxed and then the numbers go up which they're doing right now and then I get a little bit more tense about it and so I, I do think it comes in waves and I feel like that's pretty normal like I think you're going to feel just more scared at certain points than other times but I mean I I think uh, appropriately I will be dead last on the old vaccination list where I where I belong I've really served no useful purpose to society so Caitlin um, <laughs> you guys have kept stuff on the radio that's so important that entertainment factor I disagree there I think 
you know, your the morning shows and people tuning into what's going on in the world and hearing jokes and hearing fun yeah. and hearing pop culture. I disagree. I think I think people in the entertainment business have been very important through this. Um, and the great thing about our like the company I work for, at least, is that um, I have been very lucky in the sense that they hustled to make it so that we could get our setup from home and keep, stay at yeah. home. So I have been staying at home this whole time. And that is totally just the grace of our company doing that, which is fantastic. So I am pretty low risk. I know a few people who've had the vaccine already, actually, wow. healthcare workers who've had it done. Yay, and yay, yay. Good to hear. It's fantastic. I know a few people who also uh, work in long term care who are going to be uh, next on the list. So it is happening. It's been a slow rollout. It has been a frustrating rollout to witness. But I think some of that was to be expected. But yeah, knowing people who've gotten it feels really good. I can hear my mom in my head going, well, they'll know what to do next time. I'm like, Mom, <laughs> no, stop. Uh, but she was so practical that way. And there is a truth to that. We know there will be a next time now. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's 100 years ago, whether it's again in our lifetimes, we know that there's changes that we have to make as far as hygiene. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, good things do come out of bad things. And I, my friends are telling me they've never seen cleaner air, airplane bathrooms in their lives. Yeah. She's like, she was like, Jan, I would have sat in there and eaten a meal, like with the door shut because <laughs> it was that clean. Um, but, uh, and, and I, I, um, there's lots of good things coming out of this. There really is. I mean, yeah. how innovative have people been? How I, innovative I've, have people been? And this family time, you'll, you'll never get that back. People aren't going to regret, no. oh, yeah, the year I spent with my kids. You're not going to regret that. And I also think that we've had now, at least in Ontario, we're having what needed to happen was a really important conversation about overhauling long-term care because we know it ain't working. Oh, and we knew, and also, we've known that for years. Yeah. And we also know that we we can do lots of common sense things to fight, you know, stuff like the basic flu. Like we can we can also prioritize telling people, hey, stay home when you're sick, like for not just for your health, but just for the health of everybody around you. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of good stuff. If, if people can get, you know, the the freedom to work from home if they need it, if we can improve long term care and also just improve basic flu rates. Hey, that's three silver linings I'll take. If I well, and then, and then there's all this, the residual things. We just, we just have a few seconds left. But, you know, when you keep people at home, you keep cars off the road. You, mm -hmm. you keep that carbon footprint down. They, they said it's going to take them a long time to just see what the impact on the carbon footprint has been uh, during this COVID-19. But, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but traffic here, I, I've never in traffic. I haven't been in traffic for 10 months. I always feel being on the road. I'm like, geez, what am I out here driving for? Anyway, yeah. you guys be of good cheer. Um, lots going on. The Jan show starts in the United States, January 29th on Hulu. Both Ooh. seasons one and two are going to be available. So if you are an American listener, tell your friends, January 29th, Hulu. And it's been recommended by the New York times. So come on. The New York Times. I saw that. That that was really, really sweet. I, I saw that happen this week. And I was like, yes, I love seeing them, A, recognizing how good the show itself is, and B, Canadian content, and that we have some funny friggin' people just north of the border. We're not just America's hat, everybody. Well, just a, <laughs> a, a real quick shout out to our Schitt's Creek friends. Um, mm. Schitt's Creek has really paved the way. And to be mentioned in the same sentence with Dan Levy and Eugene and Catherine O'Hara and that great cast with Schitt's Creek. And, and they're saying, if you like the, you know, the Canadian wonder of Schitt's Creek, you're going to like the Jan show. So we want to thank all our friends um, on that show. And we want to thank all of you for listening. Sub hit that subscription button. If you don't want to worry about missing the show, you'll be reminded every week, but uh, be of good faith. Really interesting times. Science is here, folks. Look after each other. Caitlin, um, uh, hey, keep that baby in your body for another month at least. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Okay. Okay. Totally do.